We're back in InDesign Training Basics, and uh, in this video, I want to cover the paths and selections. Uh, this video can also be used for um, preparation for Chapter 4 if you're using the Exploring Adobe InDesign CS6 book. Um, I want to go over the um, drawing shapes and vector art. Uh, uh, using some of those tools for vector art um, and also the selection tools that we use because uh, as we draw objects and move them around and reshape and things like that we also need to select the whole thing to move it or uh, to select different parts of something that we have created as vector art. Vector art. So what is that? You may have heard of that before. Maybe you're not quite as familiar with it or this is a good review. Vector art uh, is plotted points in space. And so let me uh, demonstrate about that. Um, we have access to um, a set of drawing tools. As you know, there's just a little area here that all of them are kind of ganged together. The type tool, line, pen tool pencil and there's um, a smoothing and erase also underneath that um, and our frame tools rarely do or I don't even remember ever using the rectangle the regular um, to, uh, without being a frame because those I can just add a color but the frame tools I use constantly because I can always put something in it like a picture or text or color or whatever it is, um, a gradient. Okay, so those tools are available to us. But if I were to draw a circle, what makes that circle happen? Now, you're seeing something where um, if I were to view this without um, our normal mode, in other words, um, I can see my margins and all the markings, but they're gonna be non-printable. If I were to preview this, okay, yeah, I see it now because I had it selected, but it really is uh, empty, no, no stroke or anything like that on it. So let's go back to normal view so that I can actually see that. Okay, but I wanted to show you, well, let's kind of zoom in here. Um, we have these little box nodes, okay, and uh, each of those is an anchor point. And anchor points is as, it's as if you were to take a pin and pin, um, you know, like a a piece of wire um, onto the page, and then the next one it connects it with another pin, and in between that wire has um, a curve. You'll also notice these extended lines that connect uh, just to the um, anchor point that extend out from it. And those, well, I call them handles. Um, the book calls it direction line. These are handles. I've always uh, worked with them as handles. Now, you're going to see that um, uh, InDesign is very smart because any time uh, that I take the any tool that I have, and this is no exception, is if I'm hovering over something, usually um, I've got um, a, a symbol to change. And this... In this case, it's indicating that, hey, you can, you do have the anchor point. Uh, if you click there, you will be able to select that and move it. Okay, Away from it, no, I've missed. If I go up to um, the line segment, which that is my vector. Now you're seeing it um, close up, so it kind of looks like a jagged ed edge. Now that's um, because the screen representation um, had, is made up of pixels, but I can assure you that vector lines are not actually made up of pixels. In fact, if this were to be to print it out, whether it's small or we blow it up big, vector art keeps its um, lines and uh, intact, and in fact, it makes a very smooth line. No jagged edges in reality. Um, so these handles control the curve. So if I were to um, push one of these handles down, then it the pushes in that curve and flattens it out. Now I always say, 
I always say to my students that um, the curve always follows your handle. So if I were to push a handle up, watch what happens to the curve. It is going up indeed, and it's following that. So if I cl uh, click and drag, then that's going to follow my um, handle. So I like to kind of describe it um, as such. Okay, so it's easier, it's, it's fairly easy to go ahead and create a, um, a shape, you know, from our frame tools. Okay, but what other tools we do have? Um, of course, our line segment. Now, line segment, if you were to try to um, draw um, a box with this, okay, and try to, you know, let's close it off or something like that. I select all these. Um, I hold my shift key down. I can probably grab a hold of them. Okay, so this is not really a closed shape, so I cannot fill it with any color whatsoever. Okay, I'm putting a color in inside of it. There's no way that can happen. Those are just separate. Uh, line segments. And a line segment only has um, two anchor points, one at one edge and one at the other edge. You can see that here as I um, change my selection tool. Now we're, with regards to selection tool and a vector object that you have created, um, you're going to notice that if we use the regular selection tool then um, you're selecting the entire box. In fact, it, it selects everything, the, all the vectors, the, the anchor points, and everything together. And you're going to notice this outer box. This happens um, in Illustrator as well. And if you transform something in Photoshop, same thing. This is called a bounding box. Okay, And I want to zoom in on it. And there's different parts of the bounding box. Um, the outer edges, in fact, it just measures how big, the, the widest and the, um, the as far as height goes, um, the highest point and the lowest point, um, and from side to side, the widest points, it'll include everything uh, that you have as far as your vector line or shape, and it will have a bounding box. At the edge of the bounding box in the corners, there are for um, squares, okay? These are, um, I call them handles. I've heard of them being called handles. I don't remember if it's in InDesign they call it handles or if it was PageMaker a long time ago that called it handles because it did the same thing or if it was Corp Express. I don't remember, but I call them handles because I could grab that and move it and then that um, changes the shape and uh, width and size or what have you of uh, my shape. And I can also do a few things um, with modifier keys to uh, distort uh, the bounding box and inside of it the vector art. So I can bring in one side or another. So each um, of these are actually called reference points, okay, in, in essence. And um, where we get that reference point, and it's helpful to us when we are doing something like placement of um, our object, uh, then we can go up to the um, control panel. Now I've got this selected, and I want you to um, see this. We're going to go up to the top left hand corner with the selection tool having selected um, our object you're going to see um, a reference point, the bounding box, just like we have on our shape. And so here, the reference point is in the center. So if I were to take the X and Y coordinate, highlight it, and go to zero on each, the X and Y coordinates of our page are always um, in the top left corner of all Adobe products currently. Um, older versions, Illustrator was at the bottom, which is kind of weird, but now everything is up top left corner. So now, since my reference point is in the center, um, it's putting the center of this um, shape right on the edge. 
Now what if I wanted to the top left hand corner to match the top left hand corner of my page? Then I can change that reference point and let's go to zero again here and zero again x and y coordinates. That's placement. x and y coordinates remember are placement. When you're a graphic designer we like things that are dead on and uh, you know there's there's no a question about where it is. It's not a point off. It's not half a point off. It is dead on um, lined up and so you can use the reference point. Sometimes what I do is if I wanted to say see how far over do I start maybe a, um, a copy of this or another object to to match that then I might use the reference point and you can see here um, X is going across and you can see that uh, number change there 1.94 so if I were to place an, an another object okay and uh, then I go on the left hand uh, reference point I want it to match the left hand of this object to the right hand um, and what was, don't remember, uh, what was the other 1.94? So on this object, um, I'm going to do the left hand side, 1.9, oops, 9.4. <laughs> and press enter. Okay, and I want you to see, all right, that those two are actually touching each other perfectly. I mean, there's it's dead on. So using a numbers um, coordinate system for page layout, this is ideal for you. Okay, so if you wanted to learn uh, more about vector art um, and drawing with the pen tool, you can visit another one of my um, tutorials. I actually have one in Fireworks um, as well, visiting the uh, basics of using the ten, uh, the pen tool. Okay, so um, as far as using the um, regular selection tool, it selects everything. The direct selection tool, we can click on. Um, in fact, I had to click away to deselect and then select an anchor point, and I can do something with it. Okay, and in um, in design, these, if we use the pen tool or the, okay, frame tools, um, any of those. Now, I can make any kind of shape, and this might be unusual to you, but I might be able to put, use that, I can use that to put an image and even text inside of it. Okay, colorize it any way I want. All right, that's it about, um, a little bit about, uh, vector art and using the selection tools in InDesign.